You know, one of the greatest ways we can see a victory is um, when the world calls us to hate, we do the exact opposite. We do the exact opposite. And if this world ever needed the exact opposite, it's now. Scriptures say, 1 John chapter 4. It's part of my Bible reading plan just this morning. It's amazing. God gives us fresh bread every day. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. In us. Maybe you've seen the Broadway musical Les Miserables. At the end of that great musical, in fact, it's one of the best I've ever seen in my life, touched me so deeply I've seen it many times now there's a line in one of the songs to love another person is to see the face of God mm. can you imagine God loved us when we were the most unlovable right now Portland needs love it doesn't need hate enough of that going around more than these love. And you know what God wants to do through you and me, Christ followers, if you're a Christ follower? He wants people to see Him through us. He wants us to be the full expression. But we can't be the full expression unless we love. Unless we love those we don't want to love. That's what God, God wants. And so, when everything in your being says, oh, I hate that person, turn to God and say, Lord, fill me with your love so I can love them instead. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your parents. I would say maybe it's your kids, but I can't imagine any parent who couldn't love their kid no matter what they do. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's a fellow student. Whoever it is. Be the full expression of God. To love another person is to see the face of God. But allow people to see God through your face and your love. And as we sing this next incredible song, we need the Holy Spirit to fill us in order to do that. So let's worship God and ask Him to be here, to be in us, to fill us with His love. We're going to be doing a lot of honking today, by the way, so, but it's, it's good. So check this out. Check this out. We got to wear the mask now, but let's say, let's say like in a month maybe, maybe even after your election, who knows, I'm not going to get political, but let's say all of a sudden they find a cure for COVID. They come up with this vaccine that's 100% guaranteed to keep you safe from getting the vaccine or getting getting the the sickness 
Would you get it? I know that I would get it. So you get, you get the shot. You get the vaccine, right? And guess what? You're able to take off the mask. You're able to live free again. This is awesome. I have a vaccine, right? And you're living free, and you're living a little. And then, all of a sudden, someone comes along, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's something on social media, maybe it's the news, whatever, and they say, listen, it's probably best if you put the mask back on, along with getting the vaccine, because you'll probably be even more safe if you wear the mask again. Right? Someone convinces you of that. And then all of a sudden, you buy into it, and you put the mask back on. It's like, no! No. And I say that because there's a tension, guys. Friends, there's a tension. We can sometimes make the same mistake in our faith in Christ. We're taught the truth about our Christian faith, right? We're taught that it's the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins, right? To pay our penalty. And then he rose in victory, right? On the third day, we are saved by grace, not works, so that no one can boast. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus that is what we were taught, and that is what we embrace. And when we embrace that, we gain freedom over our lives. We are set free from condemnation. We essentially take off the mask, and I want you to take that mask off. Take it off. You're free. Yeah. But then... Someone comes along, convinces you that your faith is weak, that your faith is wrong. Or they try to add some extra rules to it. And you end up right back where you started. You put that mask back on. And that mask could represent fear, doubt, shame, whatever you felt before you gave your life to Christ. That's not what God wants for his friends. So if you want to live a little, and that's been our series for the last three weeks, and today we conclude our series, let's live a little in Colossians. If you want to live a little, then you have to lose the mask. And not only that, you have to lose it, and you have to keep it off. Give me a honk if you believe that. Amen. Three practices I'm going to talk about today to unmask the truth about our faith and how to live it out. If you have your Bibles or your app, probably your app, I want you to turn to Colossians chapter 2. Before that, though, we're going to pray. Father God in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness and your grace in our life. Thank you for setting us free. Help us to stay free, Lord, by your word. Bless us in our time together. May your name be glorified. May it be honored in Jesus' name. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, starting at verse 6, says this. This is Paul talking to the church. Just as you receive Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive theo- or philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of the world rather than Christ. First practice to unmask the truth. Filter false news. There's a lot of false news out there right now, isn't there? It's kind of tough to navigate it and filter it. We don't know what's true, what isn't. There's a lot out there. But if we're going to filter false news, 
We have to start with true news, don't we? We need a baseline. And the true news is the gospel, the good news of Christ. Paul's encouraging the church to stay strong in their faith. He's not only encouraging them, he's encouraging you because you are the church, folks. Stay strong in your faith. Remember that you have been rooted in Christ. Rather, you have been joined to Christ. He is in us and we are in him. It says in John 15 that Christ is the vine and we are the branches. We are to remain in him and him in us. We can't do nothing apart from him. We stay rooted in Christ. We must continue to be rooted in him so we, may, we remain strong in our faith, in the teachings of our faith. And the more strength we draw from the vine, from Jesus, the less we will be fooled by those who would try to sneak false teachings into our lives. Now, a couple days ago, I was, every morning I make my coffee. I got to have my coffee. I love coffee. Kind of a coffee snob, so I don't, I don't just take a coffee pot and brew it. I got to do the whole pour over thing. Does anyone like the pour over? Honk, honk your horn if you like the pour over. Okay, good. I'm not alone. So you know, you know it takes a little extra work to do your pour over. You got to grind the beans. I grind my beans. I put, put them in the filter. I put them in the carafe. I boil my water. I just got this really nice brand new goose kettle. Uh, I love it. By the way, my wife goes, why did we need that? We already had one. I'm like, honey, this one's better. This one's got the gooseneck. It's so much easier to pour. Try it. So I had to convince her that it was a good thing, which it is good. So, uh, so I, yeah, thank you. So I get that. And you know what? It has settings on it where you just push it in it for different, like, heat settings. I love it. It's, if you, you want to know what it is, let me know. It's on Amazon. So uh, anyways, uh, I digress. So, I okay, the water's ready. And I'm pouring the water into the grinds, right? And this beautiful goodness is just dripping down into the carafe. It's beautiful. And uh, I'm having a moment. You know what I mean? I'm having a moment because I'm seeing this beautiful coffee. And then I, it's, it's just about done. I've got it all in there. And all of a sudden, and this has happened to me before, and I still can't figure out what's going on, but the filter rips, and all the coffee and all the grinds falls down into the carafe. Willie, you could probably tell me why. And I'm freak, freaking out. I'm like, no, no. I don't want all that crap in my coffee, right? And so I, I, what do I do? So I get, I get my French press. This is where I started. I kind of feel like you graduate from French press to pour over to maybe espresso machine. Anyway, so, so I, I don't want all the, the grinds in, in my water. That, you don't want grinds in all that soot in with your coffee. It's actually not good for you, I heard. So anyways... I take it, I pour it into my French press, all of that stuff, and then I press it down, and then just for good measure, I take that, and I pour it back into another filter, back into the craft, and boom. <laughs> so it's done, right? And there it is, finally. It took a lot of work, but I, I, I had to do it. Here's the thing. I wanted the pure coffee without the harmful bits of the grind. In the same way, we need to protect the pure gospel from the harmful human philosophies. So we need to filter the harmful human reasoning and thinking that can mix in with the true gospel. How do we do that? What is our filter, ladies and gentlemen? The Bible. The Holy Bible is our filter. If you believe that, give me a honk. I was hoping you'd do that. Look what it says here in verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of the world rather than Christ. Paul is saying, beware, be on the lookout for anyone who would try to win you over to their false teaching and spoil the teachings that is in you. Not only that, the devil which the elemental spiritual forces, that can be translated, the devil wants, wants to take us captive. He wants to use the false teachings to destroy our relationship with God and others. There's nothing he'd want more is to destroy our relationships. So 
So what are some of the deceptive philosophies that can take us captive? What about today? Well, I don't know if you know this, but here's what's true. Every person, you and I, in this world, has a story of reality, okay? Meaning what they personally believe is true about creation, about life, about purpose, ethics, and really what happens when we die. Every person has their own story. And I think, you know, from my studies, there's, there's four main realities. There's, there's more, but I think the four main are this. You either believe there is a God, which is what our Christian faith is built on. You believe there is no God, right? Which is atheism. You believe that there's God in everything. There's God in that keyboard, man. There's God in the, in the trees and the animals. Everything's God. And, and the physical things of this world are just a, an illusion. And then the last one, which I think we get hung up on too a lot, is you are God. You are the master of the universe. Everybody bows down to you. Woo. That sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? But actually, is not good. Because guess what? When you screw up, it's on you. There's no one there to bail you out. We don't often think about that, do we? But one, I'm not going to talk about all these, but I think one of the things, especially our students, you, we hear a lot about, and we deal a lot about when we hear about naturalism, right? Or physicalism, materialism. That the only thing that exists in this world is matter, right? Is material. There's no supernatural. There's no spiritual. There's no God. Nothing like that. It's all just matter. It's silly. It would be silly that you and I believe that there's a God. And if we ever really want to evolve as human beings, right? If we really re ever really want to get with the program, then we need to give up this fairy tale of believing in God. Because science trumps all that anyway, right? Those are the human philosophies of this world. Richard Dawkins, one of the most prominent atheists of our time, very influential, by the way. He said something that I just really broke my heart for the guy. Uh, check this out. He said, in a universe of blind and physical forces and genetic replication, some people are going to get hurt and other people are going to get lucky. You won't find any rhyme or reason to it, nor any justice. The universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is at the bottom no design, no purpose, no evil, and no good. Nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. I hope that breaks your heart like it breaks mine. When you hear someone look at life that way, it's like, wow, how is life even worth living if that's how you feel? I mean, why, folks, why would anyone want to believe that our existence has no purpose, that there's no plan for our life, that we live and we die and that's it? But that's what's being taught in our universities, in our schools, and people are buying it hook, line, and sinker. How does that make you feel, is my question. What will you do about it? What does God want you to do about that? We need to be on guard to those who would take us captive with false teaching. But here's the thing, and Pastor Brad talked about this in his ministry moment. We should not cancel them out. We need to love them. And that's our second practice to unmasking the truth. Don't cancel others. It says in Colossians 2, 16, Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat 
or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. What's Paul talking about? Religious festivals, new moon, all that stuff. Jewish tradition. Jewish tradition that was being practiced for over a thousand years forbade eating and drinking anything that wasn't kosher or basically that wasn't prepared in the right way. Animals, such as pigs, right? Marine life, such as shellfish, were not allowed, amongst other things. You couldn't touch them, couldn't eat them, right? Festivals, celebrations, and observances were also to be strictly followed. This was the Jewish way of life. It's all they knew. Now, when it talks about the Sabbath day, I don't want you to get confused on what that means. It doesn't mean the day of rest. We should, we should always honor that. What Paul's talking about is within these festivals, there was a day, the day of the festival, everyone should be celebrating, not working. So they're taking a rest from their work. So that's what he's talking about. He's not canceling out the actual Sabbath that we read in the Ten Commandments. Okay? But look, Paul was concerned that those who were accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior were being taught that they must also observe, so they're adding to it, the Jewish traditions in order to be saved. Not just the grace of God. He was also preaching against like Gnosticism, this idea that you could obtain this rich and powerful knowledge about God and that way you would be saved, you would be more saved than someone else or this great piety in your life where you had to shun Everything that was good and, and enjoyable. And if you like ice cream, can you imagine having to give up ice cream for God? I mean, no. Right? But you had to do it in order to be saved. This, this is out of the teaching that was going on in the church. And if they didn't believe that was being taught, this new way of teaching, this new way of thinking, then they would be canceled. They would be canceled for what they believed. They would be canceled in their faith. Their faith was bankrupt. If you don't do this along with, with, with grace, being saved by grace, then you're canceled. We're going to cancel you. Your belief is canceled. We're canceling Paul and his teachings. Everyone wanted to cancel each other out, and that's a big problem, and it's happening today. We are canceling each other out for what we believe, for who we are, for what we're taught. Instead of loving them, like Pastor Brad says, and the Bible says we will be known by our love for one another. We cancel each other out. That is a big problem today. It's called cancel culture. I'm going to give you a, a textbook definition. It refers to the popular practice of withdrawing support, or in other words, canceling public figures and companies after they've done, some, done or said something considered objectionable or offensive. Cancel culture is generally discussed as being performed on social media and in the form of group shaming. You see it all the time, don't you? Social media, man. People are canceling each other out left and right. Look at what's happening in downtown Portland. People on both sides of the coin are rioting, and they're canceling each other out. They're canceling out the police. They're canceling out order. It's happening. There's no love in that. It's been said where two or three are gathered, there's God, right? But when there's a riot, the devil, man, leading the way, fanning the flames. But here's what I want us to consider today. We have no good reason to cancel others. We have absolutely zero good reason to cancel others. Why? Because we ourselves were not canceled by God. Let that sink in. We weren't canceled by God. God didn't cancel us while we were still sinners. God sent his son to save us. He qualified us to receive his grace, his forgiveness, and his reconciliation. And I want you to think about this for a moment, just how valuable human beings are. Just how much intrinsic value we have because we are created in the image of God. 
I love what Gregory Kukul said in his book, The Story of Reality. I would check that book out. So good. He says this, Man's value is in itself, or better, in its self. We do not gain this value along the way. We cannot lose it along the way either. Instead, the worth you and I have is built right in. It is with, it is with us from the first instant of our beginning. And it follows us wherever we go, no matter what shape we take. It will always be ours. Wow. I hope that makes you feel some value. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you think like. It doesn't matter if you're tall, short, skinny, or a little big. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you say, what you think. You have great value because you are made in the image of God. It's intrinsic in you. Now, God wants you to bring him. He wants you to accept his salvation. He wants to draw you to him. He wants to give you a rich and a satisfying life. But whatever you choose and whatever people think and what, anybody that you come in contact with, you have to remember that they have value. So we don't cancel each other out. We love each other. We need to share the good news of Christ, folks. Instead of canceling each other out, we need to share the love of Christ. We need to be the love of Christ and we need to share the love of Christ because some people are living in that shadow that we just read, the shadow that, came, that was before Jesus. Jesus is the light and people are living in the shadow of death and we need to bring them into the light. We need to share the gospel because the gospel is life, it's hope, it's truth, it's love. It's a story of redemption. It's a story that we need to join with our story. And we're never going to be able to do that with others if we cancel them out first. I have canceled people out, folks. I grew up in a household where it was normal to cancel people out. I was taught if they don't think like you, if they don't look like you, then we cancel them out because they're dumb. I mean, seriously. It takes a long time to unlearn that. Only by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit can we overcome that. We cancel each other out when we're not wearing masks, don't we? You see someone not wearing a mask, what do you start thinking? Someone's walking down the wrong, you know, going the wrong way in the supermarket. The, the, the arrow says go this way and someone's coming this way and you're like, what's the first thing you think? <laughs> As Christians, we cancel each other out. I've done it. Just the other day, I had a little bit of a squabble with a friend that I work with. And I was basically at my wits end because we weren't coming to an agreement. And I said, you know what? I'm done. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Just forget it. Go do what you want. I'm done. And that was just immature. And essentially, I told that person, I'm canceling you right now. Leave me alone. And I had to step back, and God, of course, convicted me, and I called that person back up. I said, look, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done that. It wasn't fair. I should be equipping you. I should be setting you free to do what God's called you to do, and I'm just causing you anxiety. Not, I shouldn't do that. Yeah. Sometimes it's just much easier to cancel each other out than to work on our differences, isn't it? But God wants us to work on our differences. He wants us to work it out. He doesn't want us to cancel each other out. And sometimes we cancel out ourselves, don't we? We can be the hardest on ourselves, can't we? Because we're not living up to what we believe God wants for us. We're failing at something over and over. So we cancel ourselves out because we're not worthy of God's love. Right? Or we can't live up to other people's expectations, so we must not be good enough, so let's just cancel ourselves out. Yeah. The world says, that's okay. Cancel yourself out. Cancel each other out. 
But we're not supposed to follow the world's example. We follow this example that Paul gives us. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to this world, do you submit to its rules? Now, it seems the world's rule is to condemn and cancel people. If we don't completely agree with their way of thinking, and that plays, folks, right into Satan's hands. Right into his hands. We need to remember this. This is a key verse. You need to remember this because we're often pointing the fingers at one another. And that's exactly what Satan wants us to do. It says, we are not at war. I'm sorry. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Ephesians 6, 12. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world. And against evil spirits in the heavenly places. We are not at war with our fellow man, folks. We're not at war with each other. But that's exactly what Satan wants us to think. He wants us to cancel each other out. And he loves pouring fuel on the fires that we start. Don't we? but we don't have to fall into his trap. You can live alive and you can live free. And that's our last practice to unmasking the truth. Live alive and free, my friends. Colossians 3, 1 through 3 says, Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ. What does it mean to be raised with Christ? Before Christ, we were dead in our sin. Sin ruled over. Sin was our captor. We were separated by God, by our sin, right? But when we joined our life with Christ, we joined in with his death and his resurrection. Christ died for our sins, and when we accept Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we essentially die to our old self. We identify with his death. Our old life is dead. And then Christ rose from the dead into glory. And so we rise in new life. Christ puts a new spirit in us. We are reborn spiritually. We are no longer a slave to sin. We are no longer separated from God. We are reconciled. Amen. Give me a honk. That's what it means to be raised with Christ. And since we are joined with him, then we are with him. Christ is the head of the body, his church. We are his church. Wherever he is, that's where we are. We are hidden with him. How can you be here and there at the same time, you ask me? Hmm. Christ keeps all that is promised you secure and safe. He hides it away in heaven with him, and no one can steal it, folks. No one can steal it. Think about that the next time someone, someone tries to steal the truth that's in you. You know, it's hidden with Christ. Got to stand firm. Keep your mind set on the truth. Keep your eyes focused on heaven. Well, what Paul is saying, people joke, that person's always got his head in the clouds. That's okay. If you're looking up, not a bad thing. It, you, people used to joke in the ancient world, I think it's kind of funny, it's joked that people who were, were constantly keeping their eyes on heaven may fall in a pit, you know? And that's true, you're, you're looking up, you might fall in a pit, right? But I say this, people who keep their eyes on heaven avoid the many pitfalls of life. They avoid the many vices of life. What are those? Paul says, if your heart is set on earthly things, then your life will be full of vices, such as sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language. These are vices, folks, that we don't need in our life. They don't need to be there. And as Christ followers, we have the power 
to keep those away. But then he says in verse 12, But as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, we are to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. We are to bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Thank you. These are the virtues. If we want to live alive and free, these are the virtues that people need to see in us. Now tell me, when we're building relationships with others, which of these two lists would have a better chance to show them Christ and win them to Christ? If you think it's the vice list, I want to hear you honk. All right, we need to talk. I heard that. If you think it's the virtue list, give me a honk. Okay. Second, in living your life alive and free, which list would give you a better chance? If you think it's the vice list, give me a honk. That person's learning. How about the virtue list? Which will you choose? Vice? Virtue. Amen. Wow. Friends, I'm going to close, but I want to remind you of something. Our faith is not built on a fairy tale. In Genesis 1-1, it does not say once upon a time. It says, in the beginning, God. It's all about God. He created you and I on purpose, for a purpose. And we all have intrinsic value because we are created in the image of God. And Christ has given us the freedom to live alive, to live life to the full, and to be free. And that's what he wants for you. So I'm going to close with this. As Paul states in Colossians 3.16, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and cancel each other with all the wisdom that he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful heart. If you do that, if you practice that, if you live your life like that, I'm telling you what, anything that comes your way, you will stand firm on the truth. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, thank you so much for your word. Lord, I pray that we would all live this out. Help us to filter false news. Help us to not cancel people out. Help us to live alive and free. We want to live in the truth. We want to keep that mask off. We need your help, Lord. We need your direction. We can't do this on our own. We tried. I tried. With you, all things are possible, Lord. Help us to overcome. Be the light. Be the love. Give us the strength. And if you are struggling right now because hey, you're trying to live your life on your own. You, you actually may be living like you're God. You're the master of your own universe. Or you're just not, you're like, no, there is no God. Whatever it is, but Christ has tugged on your heart this morning. And you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If that's you, then it's time for you to declare him as your Lord and Savior. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. I invite you to be my Lord and Savior, and I'm going to follow you for all the rest of the days of my life. 
thank you for your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Sherwood, uh, just great, great worship service today. Shanna actually led worship, was awesome. Erin, I don't know if you know Erin, she was unbelievable. She did an incredible job, to, this, this song, she's a part of our worship team. And um, then Jason did it, just knocked out of the park with a, with a great message um, uh, down the parking lot. And so next week, we're gonna be back down there again. This will be our last service officially as Horizon Sherwood, but we're in this transition period to, to Epic House. Here, look, look at these, Epic House right there, these really cool things. And we, hand, and we handed out these cards and these masks today. Um, if you missed today in the parking lot, come and get one next week, we'll have, we have some more. Um, next week is gonna be a great week. Um, uh, God's just challenged my heart and, and really, I've been thinking about this for some time um, to really preach on John chapter six. This is the chapter where Jesus challenges his disciples and a number of other disciples says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot have eternal life, which is like, holy cow. And he does it like four or five times, which is incredible. I've never even felt like uh, I was spiritually mature enough to preach that message from that text um, but uh, and I don't feel like I am now even but I feel like God's calling me to preach that next week it's an incredible challenge I think as we transition from Horizon Sherwood to Epic House uh, it, it's the perfect uh, uh, challenge for all of us so uh, we're gonna celebrate the Lord's Supper um, and I just hope you can make it next week should be an awesome week God bless you and uh, have a great week we'll see you Hey, Epic House, thanks so much for watching with us this week. I uh, just wanna give you that little reminder to make sure to like, subscribe, um, so that way you can get those uh, updates for future posts uh, and, and future videos, sermons, uh, PB&J shows, et cetera. Uh, also, if there was something that either challenged you with this sermon this week, um, or if there's anything that, uh, any prayer requests, anything that's going on in your life, please don't hesitate, don't neglect. Down in the link below, or down in the description below, there's a link uh, underneath connect. Click on that. Let us know what's going on. Is there, is there a way that we can serve you? Is, is, are, are there needs that maybe we can meet? Please just let us know. Uh, we understand how difficult it's really been for some people and, and difficult to, to be able to connect, to be able to reach out. Um, if there's someone that, uh, uh, that you know that, that could really um, be encouraged uh, by this message. Don't hesitate to share as well. Uh, and as always, God bless you and have a great rest of your day.